Well, welcome to the Debt Matters Podcast, where we help Canadians find solutions to their debt with licensed insolvency trustees from right across Canada. Now, I'm Wayne Kay, and in today's show, we've got a fascinating topic about credit cards and should you accept the limits and learning kind of the inside scoop when it comes to these credit cards. And to help us out with this, Francine Myers joining me from Allen Marshalls and Associates over in Nova Scotia, two offices there, Halifax and Truro. Francine, thank you very much for being here. Oh, you're welcome. Wayne, it's a pleasure. I look forward to learning about credit cards because I have so many questions. Everybody's offering me credit cards and all of them want to increase me my limits and I never quite know what to do. So <laughs> we got a lot to discuss. And it's not just credit cards that will increase your limits. It's, you know, lines of credit, anything that we call revolving credit, uh, where you are making uh, different payments every month and you'll have different pa- balances but typically yes you're absolutely right it comes from credit card so first thing i always think of is why does this credit card want to increase my limit well i think it's because they want me to increase my spending mm-hmm. right and why do they want me to increase my spending is it because they want me to they want to make more money on me because that's how they kind of you know they make their money now yeah keep in mind that and this is maybe a bit of a strange phenomenon. You'll have to forgive me if I pay, play kind of amateur psychologist here, right? A <laughs> lot of times, and I and I and I, I've been doing this for thirty years, so I talk to a lot of people, right? right. Yeah. A lot of people equate their self worth as a person with their credit worthiness, hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Right, and it really the two of them don't have anything to do with each other. Nothing. They really, really don't. You're still a great person, whether you have a crappy credit score or not, right? Okay. But I do think that credit card companies, not only do they want to make more money on us, but they do kind of play on this. Congratulations, right? Like it's like you won the lotto. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations, Wayne. You've been approved for an increase. Yep. Which means, I mean, by the way, that, that means... That should mean... Wayne, congratulations, you're... <laughs> Wayne. Yeah, you've been approved to make us more money. Oh, I thought it was, you're a great guy. We've heard from a lot of people. You come into the bank, you're always smiling. You're a great guy. We're just, we want to give you more money as a bonus. Well, that's it. It's like you won the lotto, right? (laughs) Okay. So it's not like that. So it's more your way, as you were saying. We want to give you more money, spend more, hopefully get caught up in that whole not being able to pay it off so that you're paying their uh, interest. Yeah. Now, but here's the interesting thing, okay? So... Sometimes uh, credit limit increase may actually be something that strategically you can use to your advantage. Mm. Now, how, how's that for being mysterious? I like okay. this. Okay. It kind of depends on the circumstances and it depends kind of where you are with your, your credit card. Okay. So if you have been having issues with your credit score and uh, you know, problems with that, it can sometimes be, and I, I almost hesitate saying this, right? Because I say this with fear and trepidation, right? You can almost be a help if you just increase your score because simple math, okay? What can bring down a credit score? Well, if you have over 30%, you're running more than 30% of your limit. So I have a thousand dollar credit card and you're running balance and you can't seem to get it down. It's messing up your credit score, that three digits between 300 and 900, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. If they come back to you and say, hey, you know, we're offering you a credit score increase, our credit limit increase. Well, you know what? Also, the math looks better. If you increase your limit, you will then bring down your percentage of the limit. Right. It's just great math. Let's say you increase it to two thousand dollars. Well, five hundred of two thousand is now twenty five percent, right? Yeah, right. You haven't done anything, but you've actually possibly increased your credit score next month because all of a sudden you're under that thirty percent limit. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, that's a slippery slope. Right. Okay. To do that. You know, if you need that quick fix of increasing your credit score, it'll do it. But be very careful and be very, very disciplined. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Don't 
start increasing your credit because you're going to find yourself in worse trouble than you were before. Right. Okay? And that's what they're playing on. That's what they're hoping for, I would assume. They are. So I wouldn't recommend that except when you really need to do that to increase your credit score for perhaps some other reason. Even let's say if you're applying for a car loan and they're like, well, you know, your credit score is not that great. You bring the score up and all of a sudden you get a percentage point off something. Well, you know what? That may actually be worth it. Keep in mind though, a credit limit can also equal a credit decrease, right? So if you're going to do that, qualify for the credit you're going for and then bring your limit down because you can also decrease your credit limit. It doesn't always have to go up. Now, is, is that a bad thing to do that? Does that? Is that a negative on your credit score when you knock down the amount you have on your card? It would only be if, again, you started to, because of the math, go higher than 30% of the limit. So let's say you were trying to you know, pay off that credit card and you thought, well, I'm going to start bringing it down as I'm paying it down, mm -hmm. okay? Which is actually a good strategy, but you will maybe experience a credit score decrease until you bring the balance down. So again, for talking hard numbers, let's say you have a $1,000 credit card and it's at 300 and you're working hard to get that down and you don't want to be tempted to go any higher up. So you bring the limit down to 500 or even 300 because then you can't put anything more on it. All of a sudden, you're at either 60 or 100% of your limit. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter that that limit is only $500. Really? The algorithm that the credit bureaus use to start calculating that three digit credit score will say, hey, whoa, she's at 60% of her credit limit. Whoa, whoa, she can't pay her bills. It doesn't matter that it's a $500 limit. So you have to be aware of what that's saying. Hmm. Okay. Right? Yeah. Now, here's the other kind of interesting thing. A, a bank, even though your score may start to fall a little bit because of that, a bank who's a real person looking at it will be able to assess that and see what's happening. Okay. So you might actually qualify for a better rate. They say, oh, she's only got a 500. Oh, it's at 300. Oh, that's not a problem, right? Yeah. But your score will drop, but then a bank may be more likely to lend you money because you're not overextended. Right. Okay. So does, and this is, as you said, this is not just for credit cards. It could also be for line of credit. People have line of credit. Uh, in fact, I, I can use my son as an example. He actually just got, he doesn't, he doesn't have a car loan. He doesn't have a mortgage, but he's really good with making sure that all his uh, credit card bills are taken care of. And they just offered him a beautiful line of credit to which we said, yeah, I think you should go with, uh, getting that line of credit just as for credit building. What do you think? Does he, what he really needed? I get the question is though. Um, well, he's looking at buying, a, he needs another car. And so, yeah, just maybe. Yeah. So there's a good example of using that strategically. Mm -hmm. Right? Yep. And if he can qualify for that line of credit at a very good interest rate, that may be better for him to make a larger purchase on that line of credit than actually going to finance that car. Mm -hmm. So it's all kind of strategic. But somebody like that sounds like he's handling his money well. Make sure with revolving credit, you make that payment, you discipline yourself and say, okay, that's a car payment. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So no, that's every <laughs> month I'm putting $300 away. You know, not just the minimum payment. So if you can do that, it comes down to strategy and discipline, Wayne. It yeah. really does. Okay, good. Uh, when should you not accept a credit limit increase? When you don't need it. Really? For any reason. Okay. If you don't need it to bring your credit score up or, you know, to make a strategic purchase and then pay it off, there's really no reason why you need to increase your credit card if you don't need the extra credit. Okay. 
There really shouldn't be anything. And I always say, well, when you applied for that credit card, you usually, you know, settled for a certain amount of the limit. If you're to the point where you're getting close to that limit and you're going to need it because you need more credit, then it's time to maybe step back because slowly, when people come to see me, Wayne, and I do, you know, bankruptcies and settlements with creditors and things like that, people don't, you know, when they come to me, they didn't get that first credit card thinking they were going to end up in bankruptcy, mm -hmm. right? This happened very slowly, increase upon increase upon increase. Oh, I'll get this increase. It's only a few hundred dollars or $500. And I'll use it as an emergency fund, which incidentally is probably not the best practice because if you didn't have the money this, this month, you probably don't have it next month, right? Mm -hmm. But when you really don't need it and they're just giving it to you and it feels good because it does feel like a reward, don't get it. Okay, good to know. And when we talk about what effect a credit limit increase has on your chances at the bank, what, what does that look like? Is it does negative, positive? Depends again, right? So many factors, right? Is it going to mean then, oh, now, now keep in mind too, you get a credit limit increase. It doesn't mean you have to go right up to your limit, right? Yeah. Like you said, all it means is you have more credit available to you, right? So it could be positive because it shows that you can actually handle the credit in that you're not living near your limit all the time. Mm -hmm. The other thing to remember though, here's what a bank will look at. Oh, you have a $10,000 line of credit. You have nothing on it, but tomorrow you could. So they're going to look at not only what your balances are, right? They're also going to look at what you have available to you. Really? And, and you, wow, that's, how you repay them in the future. That's shocking to me that they would look at it and say, Hey, you've been great with this whole line of credit, but you could possibly rack it right yeah. up. Yeah. You could be overextended. Okay. You have too much credit available to you. Huh. Okay. Well, it's the bank's fault because they keep increasing everything. <laughs> They keep putting everything up. They get, they're, they're the ones giving. Like, it's not like, as we talked about my son, it's not like he went after the uh, the banks and said, hey, can I have a line of credit? They said, hey, you're doing great. Here's a line of credit. Uh, oh, and let's increase your credit card. And, you know, they've done that to so many people, right? Everything gets increased, increased, increased. And then eventually, I've never been anywhere near what the credit, well, I was once upon a time, and that took a long time to get rid of. And then I learned a lesson very, very quickly when I was young, on playing yeah. with those credit cards. And thankful I did because it was able to make sure that never happened again. But, yeah. you know, you have a credit card that's way up there and I just think, well, this is crazy. I would never spend that much money on a credit card unless I'm buying a kitchen or something. Yeah. And then it's a sometimes, like you say, it's a short term finance or what have you. And you would have a strategy to pay it off. Yeah. It, it's so easy to say, sure, I'll take a credit limit increase because what happens a lot of times is people are using their credit cards as that extra emergency fund when sure. the dog gets sick or the brakes go or the normal things that happen to all of us that they haven't built into their normal budget. But right? Francine, what about this one? I go to a store. I'm going to go pick up something. I go to the store and they say, hey, would you like one of our credit cards? And we'll give you 20% off your purchase. <laughs> I've got a good story for you. There. Good, because I feel bad. Okay. I say, no, I'd rather pay full price and not take your credit card. But I don't know. You have such yeah. interesting okay, well, here's, ways. Here's where you might, you, you could do that. But I'll, I'll tell you the story. Okay, okay. So I had a friend. He was a Leafs fan, and that's sad enough in itself. So this isn't a sad story. It's actually a funny story. <laughs> okay. So he would go to all these Leafs game, games, and uh, they would have these same kind of things. Hey, do you want to apply for a credit card? You'll get a prize or this gift. And he was like, yeah, sure. So he'd apply for all these credit cards. When they came in, he would just cancel them. Sounds like a great thing. And in the meantime, he got a tablet, he got this, he got that. Okay, so he went to apply for a card. This is a true story, right? 
he went to apply for a car. They turned him down. They said, your credit score is too low. And he's like, what? He said, because you've applied for too much credit. Oh. Okay. So here's the thing. Yeah. He didn't have the credit cards anymore. But every time he went to a game, there was a hit on his credit score. Wow. So his, and that's one of the things will bring your credit score down. Okay. Is people applying for credit, whether you get it or not, whether you still have it or not, or whether you've paid it off, it's irrelevant. The hits there, right? Wow. They say probably no more than six a year. Okay. Then it'll start to kind of have a real hit against your credit score. You're way over. So Wayne, if you go to the store and they'll give you 20% off and they give you this card and you don't have any other hits against, or maybe you have a couple or something like that. Sure. Get your 20% off, get the card, cancel it. <laughs> okay. Right? And yeah. It shouldn't really affect you, but keep in mind every time there's a hit. Now I'm talking hard hits. I'm not talking you checking your credit score. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about actually uh, somebody going to look, for credit purposes, right? But that will bring your score down. So be careful about doing that because it can have a negative effect. Well, every store has it and then you, they give you points. And I mean, it's become a brilliant marketing campaign for almost every company to now have their own credit cards where they're making their own percentage. In fact, I'm going to start a Wayne credit card and I could just charge 15% and I would do great. <laughs> and I think you should. Here's the thing with that decide what the best, if you're going to have a credit card, most of us do decide what is more important to you and stick with that card. Do you like to travel? Get an air travel points card. Do you like to eat? Such as myself, get a you know, point where you can get points at a grocery store. Uh, there's, and really are credit cards that will give you an advantage depending on what's important to you. Mm -hmm. And I think that's kind of key. And also how much are they charging you per year for the privilege of using their credit card? Yep. Yeah. Okay. That's a good one as well. What's your overall recommendation on credit card limit increases? Very limited circumstances. Should you be doing it? Cause it is such a slippery slope. It has to be, strategy for you, a short-term strategy that will give you an advantage, not just because they offered it to you. And that sounds good. Mm -hmm. I've talked with a lot of people about money and cards and finance, and I've never heard somebody talk as much about strategy with something like a credit card before or a line of credit. And so I really appreciate the way you look at this and how you shared it with us. Oh, thanks, Wayne. A pretty interesting topic when it comes to credit, especially because you see what happens and it's so simple. You know, you just go up and use your credit card a little bit more than you've usually done. And then all of a sudden something like, well, any of the plethora of things that we've had happen in the last two years comes along, yeah. knocks you off your feet just a little bit. And all of a sudden you can't make those payments. And it, as you said, slippery slope, boy, we've a lot of us, a lot of Canadians have been on a slippery slope in the last couple of years. Yes, we certainly have. All right. Well, you'll be back again to talk about uh, debt and how to get out of it for Canadians. And I really appreciate your time today, Francine. Oh, thanks, Wayne. It was a pleasure. Yeah. My guest today, Francine Myers. If you want to learn more, if you want to maybe do a free consultation with Alan Marshall and Associates, you can contact wecanhelp.ca, wecanhelp.ca. And that's it for this podcast, Debt Matters Podcast. So if you want to subscribe, please do wherever you get your favorite podcast from. And of course, for more information, you can always check out debtmatters.ca. Thanks very much for listening.